Ten famous faces are going on an epic journey. It's 2015, but not for long. They're travelling into the past. This is an historical circus. With no idea where or when they're headed. Wow. Wake up in another place, in another era. Oh, my goodness. Exciting. They've been told nothing in advance. Do you know, I've got absolutely no idea what we're doing. <laughs> I mean, I've never had a costume fitting, blindfolded. So it's all a total surprise. Oh, wow. They're leaving the 21st century behind to crash land into six different moments in British history. What are we? We're early, early. 1796. Welcome to 1913. Oh, wow. Wow. They'll be stripped of their celebrity status. Oh, no, we are. We're servants. Thrust into testing environments. Where's the food? It's coming! Oh, I don't shout. Pulling these things in. Ah! It is really hard work. And thrown to the bottom of the pile. Shut up and listen instead of arguing! Can they survive everything? Ah! history has to throw at them. Oh, this is bad. <sighs> Calm down, Fern. We'll sunk the boat. <laughs> Gotta be joking. That's horrific. They are... the Time Crashers. Last time, the Time Crashers landed into a life of servitude in Edwardian Britain. Oh, my goodness! Better than Tudor Britain. I don't know, if you felt these beds? Where life below stairs... I am talking... We were just things. ...proved an uphill struggle. That is such a dire thing to happen at a tea party. Oh! <laughs> and after refusing to perform her duties... You leave me no alternative but to dismiss you without a character. Champion weightlifter Zoe was shown the door. The Time Crashers have no idea where... We're in a mill, right? I guess so. Hey, mate. Or when they are. Part of the Industrial Revolution, maybe. The year is 1796. Mad King George is on the throne and he's mad about farming. In fact, he's got three farms of his own. And now the wealthy landowners are following his lead by building their own model farms in the grounds of their country estates. They were the aristocratic ideal of a perfect farm, sporting all the latest scientific advances. This one even has its own mill to make flour. But a farm is nothing without its farmhands. Hello, mate. We're in a pig study. <sighs> you are one hell of a bacon sandwich. Hi. Another kitchen. Did these women do nothing but stand in the freaking kitchen? This is fairly deserted. The Time Crashers have been given a guide to help them navigate Georgian life. First to discover their roles are Olympian Greg Rutherford and actor Charlie Condu. You will work as farmhands and your taskmaster is the bailiff, Mr Jones. Hollywood actress Kirsty Alley and news anchor Louise Minchin are kitchen maids. America has just won her independence from the British. Yes! <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Socialite Meg Matthews and TV presenter Fern Britton get the dairy. Oh, we are dairy maids. Meg, you're the senior dairymaid, and Fern, your work to her. Happily. While actor Keith Allen, comedian Chris Ramsey and footballer Jermaine Genus are shepherds. Farming is a fashionable pastime amongst the wealthy elite who are building model farms. Later today, the owner, the Viscount and his wife, will arrive with their esteemed guests for a farm inspection. They will expect everything on the farm to have been cleaned of all the dirt and decorated, and that includes the animals. 
Do they know what phones are? It's a phone. That's all these people do. It's clean. It's show off their I'm stuff. I'm clean. The time crashers have just eight hours to make the farm look perfect. The men must make the buildings and animals immaculate. The women must show off the farm's produce by making breads, cakes and dairy products for the Viscount's inspection tea. Good morning. Morning. Morning, sir. Overseeing the boys' work is Mr Jones, the bailiff or farm manager. While you're working here, you'll report to me. Today, we want this place looking top-notch. Spick and span. Mucking out is good. Mucking about <coughs> is not. So we want things done properly or the Viscount's on my back. Joining me on the farm is social historian and archaeologist Dr Cassie Newland. How important were these inspections? These inspections are hugely important. Showing off your farm to your friends is the whole point. Marie Antoinette had her model farm at Versailles scrubbed, polished and decorated before she had a visit. It's like the rich saying, look at this idyllic environment I've created. And it was all a fantasy, wasn't it? The new machines were taking away the jobs of the farm labourers. There were bad harvests, so there wasn't much grain about. People weren't just having a rough time, they were starving. You'd have been lucky to get a job on a model farm. The women's preparations for the inspection... Is this the churn? ..will be overseen by the bailiff's wife. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And while you're here, you will answer to me. I don't suffer fools, but as long as you listen to what I say and do as you're told, we'll get the job done. Your tasks, you need to go and milk the goats, because we are going to be making cheese with it later on. You will also be making butter. In the kitchen, flour from the farm's mill was used to make baked goods for the owner's inspection. So your task will be to bake the 25 loaves as requested by the Viscount. We'll also be baking a selection of biscuits and cake for this afternoon. 25 loaves of bread is a massive, massive task for me, so I'm worried about that. And of course there is the midday meal to prepare for the farm workers. Bailiff and his wife will be watching the time crashers every move. If they do well, they'll be rewarded as farm workers would have been in 1796. If they do badly, they'll receive a fitting punishment. First job for the dairy maids is to get the milk they'll need to make the cheese. Great. She's really Go. ready. I've never actually milked a goat, but I've seen it done, so... You know, don't pull, pull, just squeeze, 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 squeeze. Yeah. squeeze. Oh, good yeah. girl. Good girl. OK, go. It's one of those things that actually, if you don't look and don't think, it goes better. That went in my ear, actually. It did go in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> With more milk going on fern than in the bowl... I still haven't quite got it. Two, three, up, Meg okay. takes over with goat number two. Look at you. A natural. But a bored goat is a frisky goat. And this one's been kept waiting uh, oh. for far too long. The goat has just trodden her filthy farmyard foot into the milk. No, oh. for her. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a lot easier than this. It's a bit exasperating now. We can't afford to lose any more milk. If I don't get the cheese done, that means there's nothing for the vice count. No. no. It's very stressful just being the dairy maid. The dairy maids may be struggling, but in the mill, Greg and Charlie are in their element. Basically, we're just separating the wheat from the chaff at the moment, aren't we? Yes, we are. Quite literally. Quite literally. Mills weren't a new invention, but model farms streamlined the process by locating the mills on site. It's just really nice to see the process of it starting as a grain and very quickly becoming flour. I've just changed the first sack it's yeah. full. I've put another one on. The finished flour was used by the cooks as another way to show off the quality of the model farm's produce. See, I've sifted that as much as it'll go. This is fantastic. 
I much prefer this era to uh, where we've just come from. I feel like I'm, I'm actually getting something done. One sack down. Fantastic. Flour's no good unless they can bake it. So Louise and Kirsty's first task is to light the Georgian oven. I'm sure it'll be like a pizza oven. If they can get it going, of course. How do I light it then? Do I light it from the back? 30 years before the invention of matches, Georgian cooks used a tinderbox. I don't like cooking. <laughs> if I had my way, we'd be eating carrots cold. <laughs> what Louise needs is a bit of Kansas know-how. Girl, we're done. Quick, 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 quick. Shit, yes. Let there be fire. It's coming well. Well done. Out in the yard, head shepherd Keith is getting to know his flock. No, I'd, I'd much rather be in the mill, making bread. <laughs> Shat on my feet. Great life. <laughs> Keith's shepherds, Jermaine and Chris, have to gather up the other sheep to give them a Georgian makeover. OK, you've got six sheep here. I want you to build the pen in this corner, get the sheep in and get it done. You get it alive? <clears throat> um, when he said in the corner, I'm assuming he means along here and to there. Why is there a load of mud on the floor in a place where we're going to take sheep to clean them? It genuinely looks like they've buried some of the house staff who've died. I reckon that's probably what we might have to use to clean them. Fresh soil. Right, it's in. We haven't done this the wrong way and the pen's got to be round there, have we? He said in the corner. He did die as a corner, yeah, he did see the corner. Expecting the pen finished, Mr Jones brings Keith to help with the herding. What did I tell you before? Oh, You're not I... going to send sheep through this. These are where we're going to be growing our vegetables. I told you to build the pen in the corner. Listen, you've got two ears, you've got two eyes, I tell you once. Don't listen to me. Listen eyes. to what I tell you. Okay, come on. Don't be the joker. That's why I'm here. You said you were raring to go. I was raring to go. I don't see much rare in you. <sighs> come on, come on. It will mean Mr. Jones locked horn straight away. You go do that and you go, OK, but how? And he goes, just do it. And you go out and then he comes back and he goes, you weren't listening, I told you to do that. I found him very arrogant and very cheeky. And um, I was very close to give him a kick down the road. The time crashers have just six more hours to prepare this Georgian model farm for an inspection by its wealthy owner. Actor Keith Allen, footballer Jermaine Genus and comedian Chris Ramsey have rebuilt the pen in the right place. Now they just have to herd the sheep inside to be cleaned and preened. Right, let's get these sheep. The key to herding sheep... Hold there, Jermaine. ..is to be quiet and careful in your movements. Three men, six sheep. How hard can it be? <laughs> <laughs> go on, Chris, go on, Chris. They're in, they're in! <laughs> oh, man! When one runs towards you, it's terrifying. It's literally like, oh, it's going to come right for us. And I was quite scared of them. Oh, no, keep them out of there! <laughs> Mate, what are we going to do? After an hour's herding, bailiff Mr Jones is far from happy. So what's happening then, boys? We're finding it odd, really odd. These should be in now and dagged. They've been round so many times, they're wound up. OK. With time ticking down, Mr Jones has to step in. Steady, 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 guys. Let's keep it together. Steady, steady, steady. And no gaps. Chris, no gaps. No gaps. Oh my God. My God, my God. Oh. <laughs> very, very, very well done. Yes. Fantastic. Oh, man, that was just amazing. I've never felt so 
much achievement. Is that what it feels like when you all pull together and you win a football match? Mate, it is. It's exactly the same. Never had that. I don't right. think I've been this proud, ever. Right, here we go. Dairy maids Meg Matthews and Fern Britton have had less success. After two hours milking, they're only just starting to make the goat's cheese. OK, I think I'll just have to put a little bit more in for luck. To curdle the milk into cheese, they add rennet made from the sliced up stomach of a lamb. While the goat's milk curdles into cheese, they can finally start on the butter using cream from cows. Two parts of cream to one part of water are poured into the dairy churn, which is there. The churn should only be filled halfway. OK, this is the bit. Go. <laughs> you went a bit mad there, kid. Yeah, I don't think that was supposed to happen, do you? It's about maintaining a steady rhythm, not too fast, not too slow, which you will get a feel for. OK, stick it back in. That was good. <laughs> the Georgians actually thought of dairy maids as pin-ups, didn't they? They admired their beauty. Yes, and that's because they aren't covered in horribly disfiguring smallpox scars. The Georgians noticed that if a dairy maid suffered from cowpox, they didn't go on to contract a far more deadly smallpox. So they started taking healthy people and giving them cowpox to immunise them. And this is the beginning of vaccination as we know it. And in fact, the word vaccine comes from the Latin vacca, which means cow. Whatever the Georgians thought, there's nothing glamorous about curdled milk, but it does make great goat's cheese. OK, wet the cheesecloth, gently wring it out and line a bowl with it. Am I, gonna, am I pouring this in, yeah? Do you want me to assist? OK, here we go. Gently, oh. Bentley. Never done this before, let's twist. Well, I'm pleased to see that cheese. Thank you. That's progress. In the kitchen, Hollywood actress Kirsty Alley has lunch for the workers under control. Uh, the next thing I'm going to add is potatoes. So far, so good. Now we're cooking with coal. But newsreader Louise Minchin is only just getting started on the 25 loaves of bread that'll showcase the farm's produce to the Viscount. I have no idea. I don't know anything about making bread, but Louise thinks There's she's... There's some irony in this that Kirsty and I are the only two, I think, probably in the whole time crashing team who've never made bread. Mm. Right, OK, so what do you think? We're done? Outside, the shepherds are getting a crash course in sheep beautification. Bagging is to clean the rear end of the sheep. Okay. That might be the worst thing I've ever heard. Georgian shepherds called the muck on a sheep's bottom fartleberries. Okay. Chris hasn't impressed Mr Jones so far, and this is probably not the ideal task to redeem himself. And the thing that's going to tip us over the edge is cleanliness. I'm a bit weird with cleanliness. I wash my hands quite a few times a day. People think I'm weird when I tell them. Whenever I go to the toilet to do a number two, I need to have a shower afterwards or the world's just not right. If they're not bagged, we get the fly laying its eggs on the muck. They then grow these eggs into maggots and then they eat the sheep alive. So this is such an important job. You see? The muck. Never been so tense. I'd like to see you in here now. <sighs> there is one pretty dirty there, Chris. Which one? That's it. Great. Wow, he's strong. Come on, hey, hey. Oh, man, he's such a strong sheep. Legs off on his sheep. Oh, mate. So this is all shite? Yeah. Oh, it's so fresh. Grappling with a soiled sheep isn't Chris's dream job. Be careful there now, Chris, because you, you, you're right on the skin there. He's kind of borderline OCD about cleanliness. So I was amazed that he actually got in there and got down and dirty. Don't it's a nightmare. It's caked. <sighs> so Chris took the really mucky sheep to dag, which took a lot of courage. I'll probably sell it thought, right, that's not something I'm going to be able to do. But I just went with it, and there was, a, there was just a turning point. A little switch went in my head. Oh, my little angel. 
Charlie Condu and Greg Rutherford have successfully milled their flour. Now they have a pretty fine job of their own. I want the pig spotless. Apparently pigs smell fear and it's safe to say that I'm a little bit frightened. First hurdle, coaxing the pig out of his sty so they can clean it. Come on. He might try and eat me. Come out. He's very aggressive. This is the problem and I can't get in there. He keeps chasing me out. Look, he's getting aggressive with me. Louise's 25 showcasing loaves are ready for the oven. Oh, my gosh, there's a really heating up in here. It's brilliant. Wow, look at that. Judging the temperature of a wood-burning oven is tricky. I think I may have worked it out now. But Louise is very confident. For someone who's never used one before... And the heat coming out of it. It's very, very hot. Georgian cookers burned so fiercely that the dresses of thousands of kitchen maids caught fire. And in 1799, a Miss Seddon's actually burnt to death. The kind of work they're doing, it's really dangerous. You're dealing with fires. It's only getting a little bit of a cinder and I'd be up, wouldn't I? <sighs> with all the tasks underway, champion weightlifter Zoe Smith has only just found her way to the farm. Hang on. Zoe! Hey! Hey, hey, hey! Zoe! During their last crash, Zoe was fired for failing to carry out her kitchen duties. Never mind distracting her, get back to your work. Sorry. Hello, Zoe. Oh my gosh, come here! Oh. But it's kitchen duties again for Zoe, grating sugar for the cakes and biscuits. I'm in the kitchen again. Again? God, this is so boring. Sugar won't be sold in granulated form for another century. The only way I'm going to get through this is by moaning about it the whole way through. I do know this is what women would have had to do, but realistically, I don't think I would have... I think I'd have made a better prostitute than I'd make a <gasps> kitchen worker. <laughs> Shit. Why? 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 Zoe's not the only one having a hard time. Meg and Fern are still battling with the butter. This does not seem to be getting any thicker. If we don't have the butter ready, then we'll be behind. Everything will be behind. Girls, how are you getting on? Oh, my goodness. Why is it so full? Have you put all of the cream in there? Mm. You are going to drain at least half of it out, churn it, and then put the other half back in and churn it again. There's not enough air inside the churn to turn it into butter. I feel I'm going to fail at this task. No, we're not. Oh, we are. In the kitchen, Louise is hoping her loaves are closer to completion. OK, one coming out. Kirsty, this, this one's looking good. <sighs> that should be cooked. See this? I mean, this is really not done. How are you doing, girls? They're nowhere cooking. near. Nowhere near? They're nowhere near, ready. Look. I touched the back one and it's kind of basically came apart. I'm really worried. Well, so you should be. And so should I. How can I put that on the table for the Viscount? The plan was for some of the bread to be served with the workers' lunch. How much longer do you think we're going to be? It's now past midday. None of these are done. After more than half an hour, Greg Rutherford and Charlie Condu have finally coaxed the pig out of his sty. That's it. Now he won't get into the pen for his wash. Look at him, he's just laughing at me. Wagging his tail. Go on. Oh, he's ridiculously strong. That way. Go, uh, stop eating everything. Oh, mate. Chuffed the bits of that pal. Lunch time! Come on, let's go and have lunch. Oh, my knees, man. <laughs> we have to go and have lunch. Yeah, we can't leave the pig in there like that and this like this. It's fine. Should we can we, surely just Greg, get rid of some of it? We've got to go and have lunch. Yeah, but I want to get rid of some more. 
There's a reason that Greg is an Olympic gold medalist, and it's because he doesn't give up, ever. They'll also be going hungry in the dairy. Dairy maids never stop okay, working. OK, we're going to keep going. You're not having lunch. No, I know, and how, how pleased I am. Lunch was an important meal on a model farm. Really? Yeah. Excuse me, coming through, coming through. Here you are. So we have some stew. It's beef and rabbit. Looks good to me. No self-respecting Viscount would want to see weak, emaciated workers on his model farm. So the farmhands tended to be well paid, well fed, and best of all, they got a daily allowance of beer. Hey, it was good for me. Mm. We're out at eight points a day, apparently. No, it's nice. <laughs> this is the first era the time crashers have cooked for each other. Oh my god, I hope it's good. It's beautiful. Oh my god, thank you. It's beautiful. They liked it a lot, so I was excited. They had second helpings. And you know, being from Kansas, when someone eats two or three helpings of your food, that's the biggest compliment. But Louise's bread isn't going down well. I wouldn't advise you to eat too much of this. Why? Well, it'll expand in your stomach. Is it not cooked? Can you not be rude about the not cooking this? Because I'm trying really hard. Just got to keep on doing this because I am the head dairy maid today. It's now the paddles are going round, but it's not touching. It's on the point of turning. You can tell by the colour of it. A little bit more. That's it. The Viscount will be here at three o'clock. We need you to work as quickly as possible. Oh, boy. Outside, Greg's Olympian efforts in the pigsty have paid off. I mean, for a pigsty, you're not getting much clean in this. <laughs> Basically, now we want to get the pig cleaned and back in his pen, and we think that's now the most important thing. Pig, 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 pig. He seems thankful for the scratch. He's happy as a pig in shit. <laughs> <laughs> This is by far the weirdest thing I've ever done. And I've had some weird jobs. It sort of feels a bit odd to be doing all this stuff just for the Viscount to show off to his friend. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of dirt that comes off. I don't want to upset him too much. Especially as we've got to then get him back into his pen. No, no, go, 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 go. Good work, buddy. One sparkling pig. But there's another creature that needs attention. The Viscount's pride and joy. Georgian aristocrats considered themselves experts at the new science of cattle breeding, searching to create the perfect specimen. We've got the Georgians to thank for selective breeding. Um, when it came to animals, the bigger the better. In fact, there was one popular tourist attraction of those days called the Durham Ox, which was a bull that apparently weighed 189 stone. That is the weight of a caravan. This is our prize bull. How have I can't thinks the world of him. He is going to be his next breeding bull. So he wants to show him off today. Big time. We don't want this back end looking like that. We've got to clean it. Yeah, yeah. So you're quite good with back ends. So let's get him outside, washed, ready for action. <laughs> He's going to let one fly in a minute, isn't he? A ton of it now. <laughs> and I saw the state of the bull's back end. I thought, this isn't happening. We're going to need a jet wash. This Georgian longhorn bull hasn't reached full size yet. Doesn't like that. He doesn't Ooh. like it. He's just a year old and already weighs 300 kilograms. But we were all absolutely terrified. I mean, look at him. He could headbutt you in a kingdom come, like. Hey. You know how you get people walking like pit bulls and that? And like Rottweilers to try and look hard. Imagine this. When fully grown, he'll be three times heavier. Is that his penis or is that hair? 
That's his private bits. Is the bit at the bottom his private bits? No, 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 that's just a bit of... Matters here. Yes. If you fancy giving that a bit of a clean. Do you not want to cheer it off? That might be a good idea. Just about there. Yeah? Yeah. While the Viscount will want his bull to look its best... It's okay. I know where the shears are. ..woe betide anyone who allows his prize breeder to come to any harm. Shear can do a lot of damage. Oh, my God, I'm going to throw it on tight here, I think. Just be really careful. It's just about that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Muzzle top! <laughs> Fantastic, guys. I was surprised that he let us loose with those shears so close to those uh, animals' bits. That's it. Beautiful. In the dairy, Meg and Fern have now been churning butter for four hours. We're nearly there. Do you think so? No. <laughs> That's the magic moment. Look at He's that. Got it. Are you sure? Yes. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I am the cat that's got the cream. We have butter. I'm happy. That is beauteous to behold. Absolutely. Isn't it? Here you go. We all think that she's some rock and roll chick, but she isn't. She's so bright and so clever, always thinking ahead. No one's going to burst my bubble, whatever. I am very pleased with it. You should be. That's quite impressive. I'm, I'm very pleased that you've had some success with that at long last. Is this my butter? That is your butter. Yes. Way. With an hour to go, Louise, Kirsty, and Zoe can finally start baking. Perfect. OK. This butter is amazing. Yeah, it's so it's creamy. Half the bigness of your hands. Bake them upon a plate of tin. Plate of tin. That is probably the perfect temperature. These are going to be good. The small cake's in. We're in. Oh, yes. Things might have come together in the kitchen, but in the courtyard, there's still a mountain of manure to deal with. This courtyard looks like a pigsty. We need to get this up into the field where the sheep are. Oh, look, that's nice. Have you seen this, guys? What? Ugh. Dead rock. And I don't want you walking, I want you running. That's the midden pile that they've got to move. It's the farm rubbish dump, which would have piled up over the week as everything was chucked into it. Kitchen waste, animal dung, dead animals, human waste, all of it lovely fertiliser. Back in the 18th century, they didn't have underground sewage systems like we've got today. Human excrement was thrown into the river, or in the case of London, it was piled up into barges and sent out into the countryside where it was spread onto the fields. The midden pile may have increased crop yields, but the Viscount doesn't want to see it in his farmyard. So with an hour until his inspection, the time crashers have their work cut out. Oh. And unless they get a move on, we're going to look a right mess in front of the Viscount. And they're feeling the pressure in the kitchen, too. Zoe, how are you doing? Um, I'm getting there slowly. Getting where exactly? Let me see. Oh. I can't see that that's actually going to work. Do you think perhaps if you were to use your fingertips, try mm. using your fingertips? Uh, I don't think anything's going to happen with this. Zoe! Goodness me. I don't know. I just wish I was a boy. I want to play with the animals. Louise's cake should be ready. Oh, my God! Well, it's horrendous. Consistency of them doesn't look very good, does it? No. Awful lot of butter there. I don't know what had happened. I put those things in the oven and it all melted. A I bit... followed the recipe. Did you? Yes. That's never going to cook, is it? I'm very worried that the Viscount will arrive and we've got absolutely nothing to put on the table. I was annoyed and irritated because I was trying to do it right and everything was going wrong. 
she felt she wasn't in control. You got 10 minutes, you got 10 minutes. Yes, I've got 10 minutes. It was quite obvious that she was frustrated and a little bit annoyed. What do you intend doing? Two loaves of bread. Yes. And a cup of tea. I'm extremely worried about the quality of what's going to go on our table. In fact, I'm extremely worried that there'll be anything on our table at all. God help us all. The Viscount and his guests are on their way to inspect his farm. But it's meltdown in the kitchen. Although Kirsty Alley has come up with a plan. I think the ingredients are so good that if I baked it over the fire, it might turn in to a pudding. And we have nothing to lose, right? I've done a lot of dinner parties and things, and it doesn't always work out the way you think it's going to work out. And I put eggs in it and made it into something else. The yard's clear, but the farm now needs to be decorated. Dairy Maid Meg is in her element. Can you help me decorate? Oh, well, oh yeah. Can you do um, two bows each side of that? This is my forte because in life, my favourite thing is dressing houses. Oh, you look so beautiful. Everything had to be beautified, didn't it, in order to transform it into some sort of Arcadian fantasy world? Yeah, on Marie Antoinette's farm, they used to polish the pigs, put ribbons on the cows, fragrance the sheep, and they would actually wash the eggs and then put them back in the nest box for her to find on inspection. No, 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 no. What do you do with these? These? These horns. Do I need a brush? What do you think? No, I need a rag. That's it. That's it? Yeah, it's hard to uh, beeswax these horns. I'm not quite sure whether you're supposed to polish them, but they're shinier than they were. He looks a lot better than he did. Look at that tail compared to what it was. It's gleaming. <laughs> Could you please put some perfume, gentlemen? Perfume on the animals? An inspection was an important social event for a model farmer demonstrating how enlightened, progressive and wealthy he was to his visitors. Even his workers had to be spotless. Come on, let's have a look at you. With the animals displayed to show off their best features. So let's get the two here. This is how I want you to hold them. Buttocks facing the Viscount. So you'll stand here and what we'll do is you can turn him to his side so we can see him like that. Because the animal's a lot more important than you. Of course. Oh, my knees, man. This is killing me. My lord, my lady, and guests. As you can see, the stock is in fine fettle. The sturdy lad, this one. And I thought he was talking about me, and then we're going, all right, and then we're talking about the ball. Chris, one of our shepherds, will take our prize ball around for a walk. And the first step, he went right onto me toe. He makes himself out to be the joker and the fooler, but he's got a way with animals. <laughs> then we have a couple of our prize lambs. I hope again we will have sheep as good as any from the South Downs or from Leicestershire. And, they, and as you can see, they're fattening up nicely. So hopefully they come up to your satisfaction. Well done, man. Definitely walked on my foot like... Oh, I saw it. <laughs> that was hard. Next, will the pigs pass, Master? And as you can see, pigs are very clean. And hopefully these are ready for the eating within the next few weeks. Very good. Thank you, thank you. It was slightly sad, though, when he said they're about ready to be eaten. I know, I thought that. Table. I'm thinking... Oh, great. I'm crying out loud. I've just washed a ruddy pig. Farmyard inspection over. Now for the Viscount's tea. But only the best female workers will be chosen for the honour of serving it to the Viscount and his guests. Where's Kirsty? I'd like you to go to the parlour now and stand ready to, to serve the tea. Thank you. Meg, I've been very impressed with you today, my dear, so I'd like you to join us, if you will. Oh, thank you. Oh, Ladies, if the rest of you will wait there. I tried really hard today. No. Mm -hmm. 
After hours of frantic toil, tea time has arrived. There we have a, a goat's cheese here, which I prepared. This is excellent. Would you care for butter, ma'am? I would, thank you. The butter is beautiful. I feel really, really proud. because I've made something from start to finish. Loaves baked in ovens without trays had undersides caked in ash. When served to the upper classes, this was cut off, hence the term upper crust. No comments on the bread, but will Kirsty's improvised pudding meet with approval? Very impressive. <laughs> they were actually really nice. They weren't being all snooty McRudy. If I worked on a place like this and they were genuinely nice people who were interested in more than flitting about, acting like morons, I could get cheeky with it. You have to give the Georgians their due. Their fascination with farming went far beyond well-scrubbed pigs and perfectly groomed sheep. Their experimentation with breeding, crops and new machinery ensured that we had increasingly productive farms and cheaper, more reliable sources of food. So much so that mass starvation became a thing of the past. Inspection over, time to get the verdicts of the bailiff and his wife. Evening, gentlemen. Mr Jones. Mr Jones. Mr Jones. The Viscount was happy. We have done a great job. Fantastic. Chris, you impressed me. Thank you. And if there is any of these guys that I'd employ, it would be you. Thank you very much. So after a great day on the farm, the Viscount is going to have a celebration tonight. We're going to have cider, stew and music. Three cheers Thank you. for Mr Jones. Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! You Welsh bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the girls have done well, but it's not good news for all of them. Louise, this afternoon, it was panic, wasn't it? It was panic and you were cross because you were no longer in control. You didn't know quite how to yeah. rescue the situation. Zoe, you didn't really pull your weight. You could have helped them a lot more than you did. Louise and Zoe, you will be needed to go to the kitchen to do some washing up. Uh, I hate the kitchen, I really do. And I've been stuck in a kitchen for every single one of these. It is hard to be enthusiastic when you're just being told you're crap all the time. I really, really like to do my job well. And if things conspire against me and I can't do it, I do find, you know, that is frustrating for me. I don't really know about life on a Georgian modern farm because all I know is this kitchen and Mrs Jones. For the rest of the time crashers, a chance to reflect on their time in Georgian England. I like the Georgians. I like their mentality. I like the way they treat their staff. I don't want to leave this era. I feel fulfilled. I'm happy. But I've absolutely loved it. Arse. I cleaned a lot of arse. This is the first one I've properly took really seriously. Got prayers at the end. He says oh, well, I'm the only one he would hire. So, yeah, I'm going to stay here. Georgian era, this farm, one of the best days I've had. Definitely in time crushers, nearly in my life. This has been an era of great change, both for the British and for our time crashers. We've seen two of them, Meg and Chris, really come into their own for the first time. And we've seen the birth of modern farming, technological, scientific, but all wrapped up in a flurry of showing off and bows on the pigsty. But that pretty much sums up the Georgians, doesn't it? Next time... What are we, fishwives? It's 1885, and the time crashers land in a Victorian oyster fishery. I have never looked lovelier. We've got the fishes! We've got the fishes! We're scraping a living from the beach. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Turns to mud 
sweat and tears. What the hell? Oh, God. This is a nightmare.